I would like to take you to the book of Matthew in chapter 3, verses 1 through 10, which is the introduction of our Lord Jesus Christ to his earthly ministry uh, and the discussion right off the bat of his um, encounter with uh, John the Baptist. We'll be doing this today and also again on Saturday. Matthew chapter 3 verses 1 through 10. In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who is spoken of by the prophets Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. And John himself was clothed in camel hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locust and wild honey. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. And do not think to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up the children of Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. It had been over 400 years since Israel had heard from a prophet of God. And now John the Baptist, who Jesus later called the greatest of the prophets, really the greatest of the Old Testament prophets, arrives on the scene with the same message as the major and minor prophets of the Old Testament. And of course that message was the message of repentance. Matthew chapter 3 verse 7 we see that is the case with John the Baptist. But when he saw that many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism he said to them brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. And then in Mark 1 4 it says John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And so the message of repentance, this warning to the Pharisees in Matthew, and what Mark tells us was the baptism of repentance. In other words, he preached a baptism that required repentance. And I want to just start off here by giving us a, a definition of repentance. The Greek word that is used in the New Testament is the word metanoia. And it means a change of mind that's the root meaning, but when we look to the scripture, it means a change of mind with a life-changing direction. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9. For they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Repentance, then, is a fundamental and thorough change in the hearts of men from sin toward God. Now, although faith alone is the condition of salvation, we read that in Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast, or, but also repentance is considered a gift as well. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 25, in humility correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. Now this granting of repentance is brought about by the convicting work of the Holy Spirit. Second Corinthians chapter 7 verse 10, for godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. 
or John 16, verse 8. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. This is Jesus Christ speaking of the ministry of the Holy Spirit during the church age when the Spirit comes after Pentecost. But one of the things that I think is striking when you read through this passage is that there are always those who want a gospel that's without repentance. And we see this in verses 7 through 10. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. And do not think to say to yourself, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. John's baptism then, that we read about in Mark 1, 4, and even here, this baptism unto repentance, is a baptism that recognizes that repentance from sin is essential. And this repentance and this call of repentance was because John was saying the kingdom of God is at hand. He knew that the Messiah was, was there. He knew that the ministry of Jesus would soon be starting. That's really not that much different than what we see today. Today, like then, there are those who like to preach a gospel that is devoid of repentance or of one's real need, which is forgiveness from sin, but rather a gospel of felt needs. Uh, let me illustrate that. For instance, with the coronavirus going on, there are all kinds of evangelism, a lot of it on the internet, so-called evangelism taking place, where we, read, where we hear things like, God will calm your fears and bring you comfort if you would just trust Jesus. Nowhere in that message is the gospel given out. No call to repentance from sin is given in that one. Or what we hear from the positive confession movement. God will bring peace to our lives in a world of confusion. Peace is the result of a repentant spirit before God when a person repents of their sin and trusts Christ alone as their Savior. Or maybe it's like the Pharisees who came to be baptized and wanted to replace repentance for an outward religious rite or act such as baptism. And there are plenty of those that seem to think that somehow there is some sort of grace that is given, saving grace that is given at baptism. Nowhere, there is no shred of evidence anywhere in the scripture that teaches that. It is repentance from sin and a turn to the saving work of Jesus Christ. What he did on Calvary's cross that brings salvation. And so, as Jesus is getting ready to start his ministry, here right off the bat, we see John the Baptist faced with those who truly have come out and recognize their sinfulness and repent. And then there's that group, almost all of them, actually all of them, religious, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and he calls them a brood of vipers. Listen. A person who truly preaches the gospel, a true New Testament prophet is one who preaches the gospel. And the true gospel preacher and the message that he preaches is still one of repentance from sin, a change of mind with a thorough 
change of direction caused by the grace of God and trust in the saving work of Jesus Christ. Do not be deceived by those who come with a gospel that only reaches felt needs, that never saves. It only comforts while that person heads to the judgment of God. True repentance brings about saving grace because we are trusting then in the finished work of Christ of which we do not repent of. That is the true gospel of Jesus Christ, the finished work of Christ and our repentance. God doesn't save us from our felt needs. He saves us from our real need, sin.